Welcome to the Beyond Cinema and Bio.com studio up here at TIFF, Jane and Jeff. Um, firstly, mate, it's kind of like an evolutionary process for you and TIFF. We've been here a few times with shorts. Um, how's it feel kind of being, does it feel different being here with Feature? Yeah, just more people know about it. <laughs> when you're here with the short, you know, you have to explain it a lot, but now I just don't have to explain it as much because people have heard of it. And for you, like a lot of your um, shorts seem to be kind of heavily based in a certain location and very specific. Like for you, for this movie, like talk me through the process of naming the city that you guys uh, that you guys decided to shoot in. Lonely Arms. Yeah, Lonely Arms. Yeah, sorry, naming the city. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> it was just sort of the first thing I wrote, and it stuck. Uh, it's like, I don't know, it's, there's a song about it. Uh, I finally found my home in your lonely arms. Um, it just felt right. It's, a, it's an imaginary city. It's like a sort of fictional Canadian border town that's sort of this, surrounded by, in my mind, surrounded by a big wilderness because kind of hanging off the edge of the US in this sort of weird version of Canada. What is a, a weird version of Canada and then Canada itself is not weird? or? It, <laughs> or through your lens, it seems like every place is just a little bit weird, right? Everybody's, every place is a little bit weird, but I think it's sort of like a... It's almost like nothing else exists outside of this town, I think, in this film. There's, there's not a much of an outside world of Canada. It's just sort of this isolated place. Cool. How did he introduce himself to you? Did he send you the shorts? Did he, like, was it kind of a formal process through agents and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. And what attracted you to his eye? Um, I was really excited when I got the lookbook along with the script. And there was that music video of Nick Cave and Kylie Minogue, Where the Wild Roses Grow. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. It's just such a good song. And like such cool people <laughs> and such a cool time when Nick and Kyler were dating. No, but I, 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 I just felt like we, I was intrigued by Jeff's style yeah. and his vision. And I was also intrigued by a musical, but not an ordinary musical, like a musical turned upside down. And um, yeah, I watched the shorts and we talked on Skype and we had dinner one time in New York. And then we met in Toronto, and That's kind of cool. There seems to be a lot of casting going on on Skype at the moment. <laughs> totally. Um, do you, like, what What do you do differently other than turn on the camera? Like, do you prep for, like, do you dress as you see the role being dressed, or do you just kind of... <laughs> not really, not on Skype, because it's not like you're, like, you mostly see right, right. this. I actually, I think that there are some things that you don't get through a Skype conversation than you do in person. Talking like, on Skype makes me a lot more nervous. I was much really? more nervous talking on Skype. That's interesting. Because <laughs> I'm very like, I'm conscious about what my face looks like then. Especially with people, you know, I've seen your face, but you haven't seen mine. Right. So. <laughs> you but in person, hide. I would see it's your face hide. also. <laughs> you could yeah, you could but say it's different camera's person. not working. There's just something, I think, like, because you're younger, probably you're used to growing up always having that. But uh, I'm not that used to Skype. So after that, did you suggest Justin as a result? Like, did you know each other shameless wise? And we had, we didn't know each other that well. Yeah. I never had done a scene with him. And I met him when we went to Chicago as a cast to shoot the exteriors, exteriors from Shameless. But no, you thought of Justin yeah, and, we, and I said I, th I thought he was a great actor and yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Very cool. Do you feel also like on a project like this that you kind of feel more in control of the creative process, you get to have kind of more of a say than, you know, obviously the fixed world of, of the television stuff. Yeah, a little bit. Is that exciting to you as a... Yeah, usually when you're, like, the, being the lead of projects is fun, not for, like, just for your ego, you're like, at the main part, but, but because you're so involved, because you're on set every single day, and, like, your character is the through line of the story, so... Yeah, people do ask you a lot of questions about what you think your character would wear and this and that, and usually they're the first person cast. Because, so, so then you're a part of the whole process, or at least I heard about who you guys were talking about yeah, in other yeah. parts, and I came in and got to read with Fabian's and George's, mm -hmm. and 
it's nice to feel like it's all very collaborative and that your say is valuable and valued. Are you creative in that way too? Are you a writer? I'm not a writer. I wish I was. Yeah. I, I think I'm a creative person, but I, don't, I couldn't write a script. Well, I mean, we were, it was very collaborative in the set, I think, because Jane brought a lot more to the character than was on the paper. So I think as it sort of evolved, I was absorbing all her ideas into how we made it, and it sort of changed a lot, and then changed sort of the whole ending of the film based on what, you know, they were, the ideas that the actors were bringing to it. Yeah. And why a musical? Like, why, <coughs> why bring that element to it? Well, it kind of started off as a musical, but I just love... I think in all my films, I, I want to strike a note that's somewhere between like absurd and emotional. So I think there's just something ridiculously absurd about breaking into song, and I love that. But then it sort of catches you off guard because you feel something, and you're like, this is ridiculous, but like that's, that's the note I hope to hit most of the time in, in some way. And the musical is kind of perfect for that because you can express the emotion more overtly than you can just dialogue in a way that people will buy. If there is an is an if there is a such thing as like an absurdist film category, mm -hmm. like who does it best? Who does the things that you're trying to do that you're doing? Who does that sort of stuff best for you? Well, I mean, who does it best? Definitely David uh, Lynch. David Lynch and Garnett and. Um, you know, I'm bringing up uh, John Pace because he's got his film playing here again. Like his early films were very much like that. Um, John Waters. John Waters. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a different kind of thing with him, I think. But yeah. yeah. Are they are they people that you've had conversations with? Some of these people. Uh, no. I mean, John Pace. I know from he's my like a film mentor. Yeah. Um, but I've never met David Lynch. <laughs> Have you? Or, I wish. You met Dale Cooper. I did. I met Kyle <laughs> McLaughlin, and it's the most starstruck. I just stuttered because I was living that moment. I was so starstruck and really happy to hold his hands. Because <laughs> you held his hands? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to ask any more questions about okay. that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, to see that, uh, have you seen a film with, have you seen this film already? Like the entire thing? I have, but I haven't seen it, like, polished. I haven't seen it with. Fully finished. Yeah. And I haven't seen it with an audience, so I'm excited about tonight. Are you good at watching yourself on screen? Like, is that something that you become? Yes and no. With? I'm probably way harder on myself than I am harder on myself than anyone else is. But maybe that's not a bad thing. Maybe that's productive somehow. On a film that has so many like kind of stylized components, I could imagine that you'd probably want to keep something at the end of it. What kind of souvenir, if any, did you take off the set? I have the wedding dress that I wore. Did you know I she would. took off the bed? I did not know. <laughs> Are you jealous? But, uh, yeah, I really wanted that. What did you <laughs> Jeff, what did you? What did I, you? Well, I, I kept the donkey bird and the, the bust of Bobby Shore. Oh, you have smashes. that? That's so cool. Well, it smashes, yeah. So but it smashes perfectly, intact. right? With the yeah, yeah, so I have that. That's cool. Oh, shoot. I was going to bring it to the party tonight, but I forgot. <laughs> and um, kind of the, the bio to com question, in, um, it's, it's kind of an easy one, I guess, but uh, favorite film and why? I, I mean, I have a lot. <laughs> first to mind? I mean, the first thing that pops into mind right now is Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Um, just because it's, you know, I mean, it's very different than this film, but I, it's like a, it's just a film about life in the most sort of honest way, but beautifully expressed in, in song. <laughs> Very cool. Jane? I do have a stock answer, yeah. but I do think it is mostly my favorite film. It's Night of the Hunter. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. I actually have that on my desk at home right now. So I have two good. Netflix discs, and one of them is Night oh, of the Hunter. Oh, you've never seen it? I haven't seen it since like, like 2000. I watched a whole bunch of movies in a row. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to rewatch it because a friend of mine just watched it a couple weeks ago, so I re-rented it. So good. So good. Um, and some kind of monster by the Metallica documentary. For some oh, reason, yeah. that was the other one I had. That's anyway, cool. That's a really cool answer. 
Very cool. Well, thanks for coming in and spending a few minutes with us. We appreciate you coming in on the big, big day. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Thank cheers. You.